To avoid you the pain of feeling lost with all the survival options, or to die a gruesome and often repeated death at the hand of shrouded monsters, I've built the ultimate beginner's tips guide to help you push through the start of Enshrouded. Let's not waste time anymore, enjoy the video! There are many types of buffs in Enshrouded that can make your life easier. A discreet but very important and easy to access one is the on the road buff. As you can see, as soon as you step on the road, the buff appears. If you go into your character sheet, you can see that this buff reduces the amount of stamina consumed per second while running. As you will soon discover, most eatable or consumable material can be altered in one way or another. Most of the time you will have to cook them, I'm thinking specifically about meat for example, but there are other ways to treat your material. Here I'll give you an example with a very common purple berry, which if you put in the drying rack, so let me show you here, it will basically change the way that the purple berry is consumed. When conserved, the dried purple berry do not regenerate as much health as the purple berries. However, the duration lasts longer. So this will help you in cases of having more life to make sure you heal more over time. There are, of course, many different types of materials with many different types of effects, which I will let you have the pleasure to discover yourself. As you will quickly realize, Enshrouded probably inspired itself regarding their weapon durability from Breath of the Wild and similar games. So as you can see here, I've got my legendary sword, which is already in the red, meaning that if it reaches zero, it will be destroyed and therefore disappear from my inventory. But the one thing they've made in terms of update, which I think was a great idea, is that they made it very simple for you to actually repair them. So this is quite important if you don't want to lose your weapons always make sure to have a couple on in your inventory so you can switch between them if one reaches the red point but to repair them you just have to come to your workbench open it and as you can see the items are automatically and instantly for free repaired to their green state you will quickly see that the stamina wheel or stamina bar, however you want to call it, is at the center of the game mechanics and will therefore require your attention at any given time. One important consumer of said stamina is printing uh, with shift. As you can see, it's eating through the bar quite rapidly. And there is actually a workaround that I really want to give to beginners because this does change uh, quite a lot in terms of how far you can go with your current stamina. Is simply hold the running button and just jump. As long as you do this, basically the entire time you're in the air will not consume anything from the stamina bar, which means that you will be able to run for a much longer period of time. And Shrouded comes with a ton of different biomes that each include a different set of buffs or debuffs. Here, for example, if I walk in the mud, I will see my speed reduced. Following up on our previous tip, the same applies. If I jump while the debuff is active, I will completely ignore the speed reduction. Storage management can be quite tricky and annoying at the start. To make things easier, let me share with you some simple key shortcuts. If you want to fill up a stack from your storage to your inventory, simply use Shift plus F. As you can see, this is taking the missing 25 from my storage and added them directly to my stack of cloth in my inventory. Similarly, you can deposit an entire stack at once from your inventory to a storage by using Shift plus R, as so. The rake is one of the most underrated overpowered tool in Enshrouded. As you can see here, we placed a simple 4x4 farm soil. Now, equipping the rake lets us comfortably spread the soil material to extend it further as such. This is a great way to make the most and best use of your materials. You can then use your pickaxe to farm it back and increase the amount you have in stock. Another important point is that you can switch the angle at which you farm your materials. This makes it easier, once done, to use your pickaxe and farm your materials back. Depending on the moment and the area, materials can be precious if you need to quickly craft an item. An important tip to let you know about is that whenever you place your flame altars, the zone becomes part of your belongings. This means that you unlock the possibility to dismantle any crafted item already in the area. From this dismantling, you can obtain different types of material quickly and save you from a difficult situation. Flame altars are not only good or necessary to create a base, they can and should be used to enable teleporting waypoints. 
Make sure to upgrade your flame altar to level 2 as soon as possible. This will enable the option to put 4 flame altars down rather than 2 at level 1. This avoids having to destroy your flame altars to have another, better waypoint. A quick tip to avoid you spending hours terraforming. Do not use the pickaxe to dig or modify the terrain you wish to use for your constructions, as you will quickly realize this is extremely slow and annoying. A much quicker and efficient way to do it is simply by using the construction hammer with the terrain tab. Here, by clicking the right mouse button, you will be able to remove precise chunks of terrain with a single click. The night comes with its own share of difficulties and freaky monsters. It also makes visibility much harder. If you want to avoid the occasional jump scare, you can skip the night time by simply going to bed. This will accelerate time times 60 until you hear a chicken screaming for the venue of the new day. Another struggle in Enshrouded is the inventory space management, and especially your action bar slots management. As you will quickly realize, you probably have a hundred items you'd like to have a quick access to, but sadly only have 16 slots to play with. A simple way to extend this a little is by going to your character page and equipping your long range weapons as well as your gadgets. This will attribute a keybind to your objects and avoid having to access them through your action bar. Another quick tip regarding jumping. If you hold shift to run, your jumping distance is greatly augmented. You will also travel the distance of your jump faster. Now, I don't know if this is a glitch that will be patched, but for now, once you unlock the glider, you can easily access higher platforms by opening the glider against the surface you want to climb. As you can see, with a normal jump, this height cannot be reached. Once I do the roll that happens from landing with the glider, the character rolls on the side of the hill until reaching a flat surface. In the ancient vault, Hunter, you can find a Ring of Endless Life. This ring makes the beginning of the game much easier. Every time the effect activates, you will heal instantly for the same amount as you hit. This makes beginning battles much, much more accessible. Even though not being a great fan of that aspect of Enshrouded, there is a simple way to make sure you never run out of your vital resources. Once per day, Enshrouded servers are rebooting loot. This means that old chests, deposited materials, bombs or potions you can find laying around, and monsters will be respawned. If you choose your settlements correctly, you should have a steady stream of materials to cash in at every first login of the day. Once started in Enshrouded, you will very quickly be quested to find villagers, or craftspeople, as they are called in-game. Once found and saved, you will be able to place them in your base to give you access to additional blueprints or aspects of the game. That being said, and as much of a pain as it may be, you will need to build a home for your survivors before they fully unlock their perks to you. A quick tip here is that you can place one or more survivors in the same home. In Enshrouded, it is extremely important to leave your camp prepared. To do so, different buffs are possible to acquire through different means. The easiest way to get the rested buff is to sit at a flame altar. Make sure to do that before leaving camp. At the start, also, you should always have a stack of water and cooked meat on you to boost your stamina and health, as they are very limited at the beginning of the game. Sneak attacks are very important in Enshrouded, as they multiply your damage tenfold. Make sure to engage enemies via sneaking. You can use the keybind C to crawl, or bushes will make you even more discreet to approach your enemies. Ancient spires are key to your advancement in Enshrouded. Not only do they give you a free teleport point to which you can always fast travel, except if you're in the shroud, but they also give you a great vantage point from which you can jump and use your glider to reach further destinations. Our last tip for today will be a quick one. If you host a server, players can loot anything you store. Make sure to set a password to avoid random players from robbing your entire server.